Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing a deep dive into uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Ooh. And specifically like one incident that's really fascinating. Okay. It comes from Elliot Mintz's new book. Yeah. We All Shine On, John, Yoko, and Me. Um, and Elliot Mintz, for anyone who doesn't know, was like a really, really close confidant of yes. both John Yoko, especially Yoko. Right. So we all use that book. And we also have a, a couple of online articles just to kind of round things out. But think of this as like a, nice. a behind the scenes look at one specific thing that happened that kind of shows you like the real John and Yoko. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting about Mintz is that he was a close friend to both of them. Right. And so because of that, he really had this unique insight into the dynamics of their relationship. Yeah. Which, you know, we all know it was famously private. Very, very private and famously like tumultuous. I think yeah. It's very complex. A three-headed word. Yeah. Um, so this incident takes place in 1972. Okay. So this is like prime, uh, you know, Vietnam War era. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nixon. Yeah. Um, and it happens on election night. Oh, wow. When Nixon wins his second term. Oh, interesting. So the scene is this party okay. hosted by the activist Jerry Rubin. Okay. Um, and the air, as you can imagine, is very, very thick with like tension and disappointment because a lot of the people at this party were very much not in favor of Nixon. Of course. And this is where things get really interesting. Okay. So John is at this party and he is drinking oh. quite heavily. All oh, right. Um, and he ends up having this very public, very loud what? sexual encounter with a woman. At the party. At the party. Oh no. With Yoko there. Yoko is there. Oh wow. And she can hear everything. Oh my goodness. So Mince talks about this moment where it's just like stunned, mortified silence. Oh, wow. Like, you can just imagine, like, the record scratch. Like, everybody in this room knows what's happening. Oh, God, that's so awkward. <laughs> and it's like, their coats are in the room. Like, how do we get out of here? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's really fascinating because it's like, yeah. this is so far from, like, the peace and love right. image that they cultivated. Exactly. It's really jarring, you know, when you think about it. Yeah. Because it really challenges how we traditionally view John Lennon, right? I mean, he was this champion of love and peace. Right. And, you know, to think of him behaving this way is so contradictory. Yeah. And it's like, OK, so everybody listening. Yeah. Like, think about a time that you have like. Oh, yeah. Acted in a way that completely went against like oh. your morals or your values or something that you preach all the time. Right. Like we've all been there. Right. Like we've all been hypocrites in some way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so this is like that but magnified by a thousand mm -hmm. because right because he's John Lennon he's John Lennon right so it's like how do you reconcile that it makes you wonder how much pressure is on someone like that to be this perfect like embodiment of these huge ideals yeah when in reality he's a human being with flaws just like the rest of us and you know it makes you think about all these other things in their relationship yeah like John's affair with May Pang Oh, right. Which we're not going to get into too much. Yeah. But that's another example of like, right. th this wasn't always like a picture perfect. Yeah, like storybook romance. Oh, right. It was yeah. real and it was difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And that period with May Pang, it's often called his lost weekend. Yeah. And it just adds another layer to this whole story. You know, it's mm -hmm. like even someone who preaches peace and love. Mm hmm can still get lost totally. in their own personal turmoil. Yeah. I, I think for a lot of us who grew up idolizing him, uh -huh. it's hard to confront it's that. It's hard to accept. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you almost don't want to know. Right. You want to hold on to that perfect image, yeah. the imagined guy, you know. Right. But the reality is he was more complicated than that. And I think that's okay. Yeah. Because it makes him more human. Exactly. And honestly, I think it makes his message even more powerful. Right. Because it means that these ideas of peace and love weren't just coming from some, right. you know, untouchable being. Right. They were coming from someone who was actively trying to live them out. Right. You know, someone who struggled and stumbled, but kept striving for something better. Yeah. And that striving is what makes his story so compelling. Exactly. It's the journey, not the destination. I like that. Yeah. It's like he wasn't this perfect being who just like right. magically achieved enlightenment mm. he was a guy right who was working on himself yeah trying to be better trying to be better yeah and that's something we can all relate to exactly so it's like how do you reconcile like right. this incident and his behavior yeah. with the fact that he was preaching peace and love right and how do we view that 
It's a good question. Yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah, it's something that's worth thinking about. Yeah, and we're going to dive into that more when we come back. All right, sounds good. So we were talking about how John wasn't always this, like, imagine guy you know yeah. like he had these moments that just totally clashed with that image totally and it's like does that ruin it yeah like does that change how we view his message of peace and love right like can we still enjoy his music knowing that he wasn't always living up to those ideals and knowing that he was kind of a jerk in that one situation yeah and you know it's tough because there's no easy answer right. like i think it's something that we all kind of have to grapple with on our own yeah like for some people learning about this stuff might make them like lenin less yeah like it kind of tarnishes the image right but for others it might actually make his music even more meaningful more meaningful how so because it makes it more real you know yeah it's like these songs these anthems of peace and love they weren't just like empty words nah. they came from a place of struggle like lenin was trying to figure this stuff out himself yeah and that's what makes it so powerful it's like you see the cracks in the facade. Exactly. And you realize he's human. Yeah, and I think that's what makes art so amazing. Yeah. It can be so much bigger than the person who created it. Right. It can give us this glimpse of something higher, something we all yearn for. Even if the artist themselves isn't perfect. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's like that whole don't meet your heroes thing. Ugh, I hate that saying. Yeah, me too. But there's some truth to it. Yeah, like we build people up in our minds and then... And then they disappoint us. Yeah. But maybe that's okay. Okay. Maybe it's okay to be disappointed. Really? Yeah, like maybe that dissonance is actually a good thing. Mm. I never thought of it that way. It's like it forces us to confront the fact that no one is perfect. Yeah. Not even our heroes. Not even John Lennon. Right. And maybe by accepting that, uh -huh. we can start to accept our own imperfections too. That's deep. You know, it's like, it's all about embracing the messiness of being human. The messiness. Yeah, like both in ourselves and in the people we look up to. Yeah. And maybe that's where we find real connection. Connection. Yeah, like that shared understanding that we're all just trying to figure things out. We're all just trying to figure things out. And that none of us have all the answers. Especially not John Lennon. Especially not John Lennon, yeah. So how does this change how we look at his relationship with Yoko? Hmm. It definitely makes it more human. Human? Yeah, like less of this fairy tale romance. Right. And more like a real relationship. With real problems. With real problems, yeah. Yeah, because can you imagine like yeah. every fight you have, every disagreement. Every little thing just blown up. Blown up by the media. Yeah, it's crazy. Like no wonder they had issues. Right, but the fact that they stayed together, yeah. that says something. It does. Like their love was strong enough to withstand all that. The pressure. The screw me, yeah. the affair. All of it. It's kind of beautiful, actually. It is, you know, when you think about it. Like, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. But it was real. Real and lasting. Yeah. Which is more than most couples can say. That's true. So, yeah, I think this whole deep dive, it's not about, like, yeah. tearing down John Lennon or anything like that. It's Rough. about seeing him more fully. More humanly. Yeah, like with all his complexities. And contradictions. Right, and maybe by doing that, yeah. we can learn to be a little more forgiving. Forgiving. Yeah, you know, towards ourselves and others. Because we're all just human. We're all just human at the end of the day. Messy, flawed. And perfectly imperfect. I like that. Me too. So we've been talking a lot about this incident at Jerry Rubin's party. Yeah, like this one night that kind of changes how we see John Lennon. Right, and it brings up a bigger question about like, how do we view our heroes? Yeah, especially when they don't live up to our expectations. Like John Lennon with all his talk about peace and love. Mm -hmm. And then he does something that seems to completely contradict that. Exactly. Yeah. So how do we reconcile that? How does that affect his legacy? I think it comes down to accepting that no one is perfect. Yeah, like yeah. even John Lennon had his flaws. Right. And maybe by acknowledging those flaws, yeah. we can actually appreciate him even more. Appreciate him more. How so? Because it makes him real. You know? Uh -huh. Like he's not just this untouchable icon anymore. He's a human being who made mistakes. Like all of us. Exactly. And I think that makes his message even more powerful. Powerful how? Because it means that peace and love aren't just these abstract ideals. Yeah. There's something that we have to work towards, yeah. even when we mess up. Even John Lennon messed up. Even John Lennon, right? So it's like we're seeing him not as this perfect being, yeah, but as a person who's on a journey. A journey that we're all on. Trying to be better. 
trying to figure things out. Yeah, and I think there's something really beautiful about that. I Like, it's not about putting him on a pedestal. Right. It's about recognizing his humanity. Yeah, his flaws and all. And maybe by doing that, yeah. we can learn to be more forgiving of ourselves. And of others. Because we're all just trying our best. Exactly, we're all in this together. So as we wrap up this deep dive yeah. into John and Yoko, yeah. I think the biggest takeaway for me is that mm-hmm. even our heroes are human. Absolutely. And that's okay. More than okay. I think it's what makes them so inspiring. Yeah, because it shows us that we can all strive for something better. Even when we fall short. Even when we mess up. Right. And that's a really powerful message. So if you're interested in learning more about John and Yoko, I highly recommend checking out Elliot Mintz's book. Yeah, it's a great read. It's called We All Shine On. Definitely worth checking out. And that's it for this deep dive. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back soon with another fascinating story. Until then, keep exploring. And keep diving deep.